Good afternoon. Um, um, thank you everyone for being here today. We're gonna start today the National Training Workshop virtual session and the Veterans Harvest Workshop. Our presentation today is celebrating Veterans Total Farmer Health with a Natalie, Natalie Roy. Um, she is. Um, she has been the executive director of the AgriSafe for over 20 years. Natalie Roy utilizes her public health training to improve the quality health care offer for farm families. Natalie holds a master's in public health from Tulane University. She is pleased to work in the area of agricultural health as it relates to her experience growing up on a farm in Canterbury, New Hampshire. So before I turn it up to her for um, her presentation, I would like to just um, give you some announcements today. Please mute your microphone to allow for a better um, communication here and rename your screen with your first and last name if you have not done so already. Uh, if you need closed captioning, you can click at the bottom of your screen on the live transcript icon. And if you have questions, we're going to leave, um, well, I'm going to present the questions to the presenter at the end. Uh, so please type them in a the chat box as, you know, as the presentation goes on. And we're going to be recording this session and it's gonna be available at the National Agribility website at a later day. And at the end of the session, please um, check on the chat box to complete the evaluation of this session and keep on checking on your chat box. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Natalie Roy. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make sure y'all can see my screen. I hope that's it. All right. Okay, can you see it okay? Yes, we can yes. see Okay, it. great, thank you. Well, thanks for the opportunity to um, speak with you all today. And I'm actually filling in for um, two of my colleagues. One is Alinda Manuel. And um, she is the community health director and she is a farmer in Nebraska. She's also a nurse and she's up in Minnesota at the Farm Fest there um, speaking with farmers right now and um, educating in the area of public health. So um, as things were opening up, we decided to kind of tag team. And so I'm covering uh, for today. Also, Shay Folk was set to present with her as well today. And Shay is um, on the board of directors for AgriSafe. And uh, he's been a great addition to our, our team of board of directors because he, uh, he brings a great perspective in terms of veterans health. So um, you might've heard from uh, Shay before, if you've listened to some AgriSafe work, we encourage you to check out some of the great work he's done for us. So I'm gonna do my best to fill in for them. All right, let me just go ahead and move a couple things here. So protecting the people who feed the world, um, that is our tagline here at AgriSafe. And we take that um, challenge very seriously. And we know that um, we have a great responsibility to look at all the people who feed the world. And that includes veteran farmers. Um, AgriSafe is a national nonprofit. Uh, we're very kind of small but mighty. So we actually have uh, less than 10 employees. And it's really important for us, and I'm the executive director of AgriSafe and helped start it about 20 years ago. It's really important for us to be mindful of the folks that work in our culture and their different exposures and perhaps their different prior occupations. And certainly veterans are no exception to that. Um, and so for our organization, it was important to, for us to recognize that if you're a farmer, you have unique uh, health exposures and risks, but also if you're a veteran, you come um, as well with uh, prior exposures and, and um, perhaps health disparities that may make it even more difficult and compound the problem of farming um, as a veteran. And so we uh, really are looking at doing a deep dive into the health of veterans. And I'm gonna explain to you a little bit about what we've done and what we hope to do. And hopefully I can uh, motivate some of you to reach out to us to think about collaborating with us in the future. 
Um, a couple of things by the end of the session I want to make sure we can do is, first of all, um, you can see the objective there is to celebrate the power of rural veterans and their desire to improve agricultural communities. Um, in thinking about this, this title, um, it was purposely thought about, you know, a lot oftentimes we sort of, uh, and AgriSafe, we do a lot of web-based training, but we think of like sort of doom and gloom of health problems that groups face. But we want to try to take a different angle at this and say, okay, what is it about rural veterans um, that we can celebrate in terms of their ability to maintain um, good health and really empower them to um, to improve their quality of, of, of health care they receive? So the, the title of this specifically was to celebrate the power of, of rural veterans. Um, we want to talk to you about total farmer health concept. I want to talk to you about what that means for AgriSafe and how, what that means for the potential of the veterinarian, I mean, the, the vet, sorry. Um, and also want to identify health disparities that veteran farmers face. And most of you on here may already know that, um, so I may be speaking to the choir, but it's important to revisit that and understand that some of us might be new to understanding the unique health disparities that veteran farmers face. And then finally, the last piece here, which is really kind of the, the core about what we're about here at AgriSafe is, what are those creative solutions that we can um, develop to improve the health of veteran farmers? And originally this, um, this presentation was meant to be what we call an unconferencing event where we were gonna go in person during the, the in-person agribility event and do what we call unconferencing, meaning that we were gonna learn from all of you about where we need to refocus our direction, what type of trainings people need, where we're missing the mark. Um, you, very difficult to do an unconference event when we don't have that that face-to-face -face experience. So I'm going to try my best in this time here to really, um, hopefully, kind of kind of give you the lay of the land about where we're heading with AgriSafe for the program. But really, really encourage you to reach out to us if there's anything that I talk about that kind of sparks interest in collaboration. I would love to hear from all of you because we really have a lot of work to do specifically serving uh, those that are uh, veteran farmers. So just so that I know the audience I'm talking to, um, I want to launch a couple of polling questions and that's going to help give me a sense of like who's attending today. So the first question is, are you a veteran or an active military service? Just kind of pretty simple question, so we'll just wait for that to to come in, and then uh, okay. So about 42% of you. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And then I'm going to go ahead. Oh, it's changing a little bit. We got a few more in here. About 40%. Okay, that's very helpful. All right. And then oh, I'll share that results with you all so you can see. So it's about 40%. Okay. So stop sharing that. Um, let me go ahead and just I got another polling question here for you. Let's see, question two, again, just to give me an idea who's in the audience. Um, and this is, do you, do you serve the health and or safety needs of veterans or those in military service? So is it part of your, your job, like in your, it could be in your volunteer work, do you do anything related to serving the health or safety needs of those uh, of veterans or those in military service? Okay, good. So there's about we're kind of getting around 60% of you um, have some role where you your your role is to serve the health or safety needs of those that work uh, in, uh, those who are veterans or have military service. Okay, thank you for that. It helps me know my audience. All right. Well, first of all, let me just say um, those of you who are veterans, thank you. Um, I I can't tell you how much I think about what, uh, whoops, advancing a little bit fast here. Um, those who have served our country and what they bring, it's, it's, uh, it's just astounding to me about how much, um, how much is being done uh, on behalf of our, our country and those who serve. And, and I'm not a veteran myself and I just, uh, family members that are, but I just can't tell you how much um, it means to know that we have people that are protecting our country and, and our rights and such. And, it really motivates us here at AgriSafe to think about like the last thing we want to have happen uh, with a veteran coming back and finding farming as an occupation they want to, you know, want to engage in and explore is we don't, we don't want um, there to be any harm that comes to them 
in the occupation of agriculture, but we have to appreciate if they come with um, any pre-existing conditions as a result of the military service. So that is why we're invested in understanding those needs. When I talk about total farmer health, when I, that's something that AgriSafe has uses, uses as our um, education for farmers across the spectrum. Um, and the reason why we, we focus on this and we have this image for you to look at is that it's not enough for our nonprofit to just look at things like, okay, how does um, finances affect someone's health and their stress or their access to health care? All of these uh, different icons you see here, uh, depending on the balance and whether or not um, folks are getting good uh, overall uh, support within their community, access to care, all these various factors can affect one's health. And total farmer health is actually um, adapted from what we call total worker health, which is if those of you aren't familiar with CDC uh, has a, a philosophy or approach to worker health, which is grounded in what they call total worker health. And AgriSafe is an affiliate of that. And what that means, and you can see from this picture here is when we go to farm events, we're not gonna go and try to educate farmers about you know, very detailed, kind of have a big display and say, okay, do this to help provide you know, uh, more support on your back or do this to reduce pesticides. We're gonna give them this overall picture of what does it take to really achieve total farm health? And it is a, a big job, but really it requires in the workplace an understanding of factors that can, that can impact someone's health that may be out of their control. So, you know, someone may, for example, be, um, you know, in, in agriculture because of situations with having to get the harvest in, they're not sleeping well, or because they're self-insured, they don't have good access to healthcare. So AgriSafe, when we think of our program here at AgriSafe, it's our responsibility to AgriSafe to make sure that we provide good programming across all of these icons. So we're talking about things like um, not just the hazards, like the PTO shield missing, but what about your social support? Is there um, isolation in rural America or folks uh, experiencing depression, anxiety, because they're more isolated? So that's why you see a lot of our programming is gonna have this holistic approach and it follows what we call total farmer health. And it is based in the philosophy of total worker health philosophy, which I've just mentioned. Um, Certainly agriculture is such a, a unique occupation. You've got full-time, part-time, mobile, young, old, physically or mentally challenged in ways. And it's not an easy uh, industry to understand. And certainly because most farmers don't have their own full-time occupational health nurse or their HR specialist, farmers are often on their own having to navigate a lot of difficult, difficult challenges we at AgriSafe are trying to raise a bar and say it's not enough just to talk about the hazards in agriculture, but what about your overall well-being? This is a great example with this picture is your fitness. You know, even though agriculture is, is normally you're on your feet a lot, you know, because of the way with machinery, there is more sedentary. So how well are you prepared for the job that you have at hand? Do you have the strength involved? Do you have the, um, uh, you know, women are actively involved in agriculture. Is there a risk to you because perhaps, you know, you don't have the strength in upper body or such, you are prepared for the job. So we at AgriSafe wanna look at all aspects of being well, including your fitness. Um, this was on the icon weather. Uh, certainly those that have military experience and, and you know, know that they, their mission, they do their mission, whether it rains or shines, they don't get to choose their weather, right? Same thing with agriculture. So literally you have, Folks that have worked in, a, in, a, in the military service are used to having to get their work done. They're in agriculture, same thing here. They're not gonna not get their crops in. They're not gonna take care of their livestock. We're very concerned about that here at AgriSafe because when, for example, a farm floods, and this is Northeast Nebraska on, in the bomb cyclone that happened a couple of years ago, you know, you get a lot of great um, resources on how to take care of your livestock, how to take care of yourself, very few resources, I mean, how to take care of livestock and crops, very few resources on how to take care of yourself. And that's where we believe that there needs to be really good guidance on natural events. Same thing with wildfires. You know, unfortunately we're dealing with that or not we, but the West Coast um, and here at AgriSafe, we want guidance on that. So you're gonna find a really in-depth library on all different types of total farmer health hazards. Um, that can affect the farmer. And we wanna make sure this gets in the hand of veterans farmers, okay? We don't, we don't need to do a special training just for veterans, say, okay, well, you're a veteran and you farm, 
and you have the flooded risk, what does it mean to you as a veteran farmer? It's gonna be the same for you, whether you're a veteran or um, a farmer, except that you may be bringing pre-existing conditions that um, make it, a, a, it your response different, okay? But it's our job to make sure that this material gets into the hands of those, all those who produce food, including veteran farmers. So please help us do that. Please tap into our resources, please tap into our trainings and, and share the library that we have. Um, I'm really wanting to also spend this time with you to, to really encourage you to tap, to tap into the programs that exist for, for veterans. Um, even though I know the veteran rural health system has um, not performed at the, the level that a lot of veterans feel it should, um, there are advances happening. And one of the things I wanna ask you all, and this is a polling question, and this helps me gauge the audience is, um, what, what, sorry, I'm gonna get my, uh, wait a minute here, my order of questions are a little bit off because I did, I sent them in, oh, sorry about that. I had an order and I, oh, here we go. Okay, sorry, let me launch this question. So question six, what word best describes the purpose of the VA whole health program? So this is like a little, little quiz for y'all. I just kind of want to see how familiar folks are with this program. And you don't, if you don't know, that's perfectly fine too. Just say, I've never heard of the, of the VA Whole Health Program. Okay, so looks like, um, so the correct, okay. So the correct answer, I'll go ahead and end the poll here. Um, there's a correct answer. And I guess you guys, this is kind of tricky because you could have guessed too, but I'm gonna share the results. So, um, about 60% of you kind of said you didn't never heard of it. And maybe that that some of you also never heard of it and also were probably kind of guessing which one it might be. But the correct answer is the VA program is a program that empowers each individual to take charge of their health and well-being. Um, this is it's interesting that they use the word whole health. And the reason why I say that's interesting is because um, it really parallels with the total pharma health concept that AgriSafe has been embracing for like the last 15 years. And that means that, you know, the VA is looking at a whole health in terms of, of what does it, what does it take for one to be um, uh, healthy across the spectrum of conditions, you know, from both the body and the mind, but um, making sure that they have access, uh, veterans have access to uh, things such as mindfulness initiatives, you know, uh, where they have mental health access. And so I'm not going to, I can, if you Google VA home health, you'll get to the Veteran Service Administration information on that. And I really encourage you to think about some of the resources they have there for veterans. And they've, they've set it up so that you can um, actually become advocates for their whole health program. And I think that it's important that that those of us, and I asked why I asked you in the beginning, do you serve farmers in any way that are veterans, you know, the military? If, if you do, this can be a in really incredible tool for you because it will give you uh, access to programs that are free for veterans that really go beyond, um, you know, both basic primary care, but get into like, what can you do? And literally the answer is to empower, to empower someone to take care of, of their health and well being. And that's a really, really difficult thing to do because depending on um, even generational differences, uh, oftentimes you see folks of an older generation are, are so used to, you know, perhaps just being told from the doctor, okay, the doctor told me this, I have to do it. It's really a different mindset of thinking, okay, how do you empower, empower someone to take care of their own health um, and to take charge of that? And here at AgriSafe, it's really important that we encourage uh, farmers to do that and we give them the tools for that. And the reason why I say that is because what is the chance that a farmer, and let's even add a veteran, uh, veteran farmer, when they go for care, they see the primary care provider, that that, that primary care provider is gonna know enough about agriculture to say, well, tell me about your respiratory exposures on the farm. I know that you know, you're unloading grain and there could be you know, tightening of chest. We just are not there in our healthcare system. We're just not asking the right questions about someone's occupation. And how often does a rural health provider ask a veteran 
about their military service and understanding perhaps risks or health disparities experienced from the military service. We've just not seen it. So what I was excited about the whole health program is I feel like it's another opportunity to really uh, work with veterans to say, look, it's you have to take care of your health as an advocate and make sure that who you're seeing understands that maybe your concerns are related to your occupation. And certainly farming, there's lots to talk about in agriculture. Um, and that is why uh, here at AgriSafe, uh, we're gonna be launching what we call a, uh, we have an ag health risk assessment for farmers, but there's gonna be one for veterans. And I'll talk about that a little bit later here, but I wanna kind of um, show you the slide about the whole health. This was, this is a social media post from um, the whole health, you know, with through, through the uh, VA, they've got tons of resources for you. Um, I know it's kind of all on a digital platform, but it really helps lay out um, a lot of self-help tools. And I would encourage you to, to access that for those veterans that you serve. And if you're a veteran yourself, please tap into this. Um, okay, this kind of gives me a, this polling question, uh, these two ones here to kind of give me an idea of like folks here that are actively involved with, with agriculture, kind of get me an idea of like those who are actually, who produce as well. So if you can answer this, that'd be super helpful. And that's any agricultural product, like, you know, it could be crops, it could be livestock, it could be part-time, full-time. Okay, so about half of you, half of you um, produce uh, agricultural products, okay. And let me ask the other question here. Um, and then this one's kind of similar to the one about do you serve veterans, but um, this is specifically, okay, do you serve the health or safety needs of agricultural producers? I'm just trying to figure out um, uh, how many of you have that, that focus of the farmer in, in the work you do. Okay, so about about 60% of you, and that's probably why you're on today. So, okay, thank you for that. Okay, well, that helps me because it, you know, I'm again, speaking to the choir, half of you, you know, in terms of agriculture, if, if some of you are on that are not familiar with, with um, the culture of agriculture, one thing I can say without a doubt is that there is common similarities across the nation in terms of those who work to produce food and fiber and fuel for for our country. Um, they have a love of land, community heritage, risks are an accepted trait. Um, they're self-reliant, stoic, and determined to succeed. Um, and they contribute to billions of dollars in our economy. I grew up on a hobby farm in New Hampshire, 200 acres. I thought it was a big deal there in New Hampshire, and it was for our family. I moved to Iowa um, after graduate school, worked for the University of Iowa, understood agriculture in a different way. And now I'm here in Louisiana, uh, where of course agriculture produced differently here. We, we produce you know, rice and crawfish all in the same crop. So a lot of variety there in agriculture. I'm not a, a farmer myself, but anymore was when I was a child. But what I appreciate here at the end of the day is that, that farmers work very, very hard to do what they do. And they're not, they're not looking for help. I, mean, I know you all know that. But we have an obligation to serve the public health needs. And we're, I feel in a lot of ways, um, this is an occupation that is, is we're missing the mark. So uh, in terms of, you know, who's producing and that are military, you know, unfortunately, we only have the 17 census to go from, but um, we know military service is about 11%. So we have 3.4 million producers, about 370,000 producers have served or were serving military in 2017. 11% is a decent number. We have to make sure that we are reaching them with our programming. Um, you know, so because, because veterans also who are living in rural communities have the same health disparity as farmers, we sort of have a compound effect, okay? So a lot of times veterans will wanna work, live in rural communities, be closer to family. It's a, it's a uh, easier transition to do that. We wanna make sure that the rural communities um, are able to support the work of veterans and farming and make sure they're protected. Um, what's interesting is, of course, is variation across the region. Whoop, I'm a little too fast there. Sorry about that. I go back here. My slide is. Yeah, there we go. So, 
um, in the Midwest, you're going to see you're going to see a lot, uh, a little higher percentage in the Midwest of veterans that are that are um, that are in rural location than other parts of the country. It's no surprise in the West West Coast, you don't have as much uh, folks that are rural. A um, couple of things, and again, you guys may already probably know this, but um, in terms of accessing care, you know, where where are rural veterans accessing care? It's interesting that a, that a higher percentage of veterans in rural America seek care through the VA than in, in urban settings. Okay, so what that tells us, or tells us here at AgriSafe is if we're going to influence the quality of care that, that veteran farmers receive, um, we need to see where they're accessing those, that care. Okay, so if they're accessing the care, higher percentage in the VA healthcare system, we can't work in a vacuum and not collaborate with the VA healthcare system. That's why I'm spending time showing you about some of the resources there. Um, it's also important for us to remember, obviously, that, that rural veterans are women. Uh, they, they represent minorities. They earn less than, than other uh, populations uh, in their urban counterpart. Um, and really important, they don't have access to the same level of home internet that you might see in the urban, okay? So access to care, access to information, um, even the trainings that we do here at AgriSafe, you know, we, we've rolled out trainings for veterans. I can't say that they could reach them because they have less percentage of access to inter internet. Um, so also you see that there's a higher percentage in that, uh, in that age group of 65 to 70, a higher percentage uh, in that age group of veterans, age distribution wise are, are uh, rural, okay? So rural location. Now, in terms of their, uh, I talked a little bit about demographics, but what, is, what are these health conditions looking like that we're concerned about, okay? They do represent an older population. We're likely to be diagnosed with diabetes, obesity, high, high blood pressure, heart conditions. Um, and of course, these need more, more care. Uh, and then of course, the thing that's concerning too is of the prior, prior service, the military, are they coming with uh, disabling of, uh, uh, disorders like hearing loss, PTSD, musculoskeletal issues? Um, now they're returning back to rural America. Are they getting the right care? We certainly know that um, uh, these conditions exist. In terms of uh, access to unemployment, rural male veterans have a higher rate of unemployment and disability and have difficulty with access to mental health care. Rural females, rural females have, uh, veterans also have access issues to childcare, transportation, and also uh, mental health care access as well. I wanna just share with you a, a short video that we did uh, who, Cindy Stockcamp, who talks about, she's a veteran, she talks about her return back to her farm and what it meant for her in terms of trying to connect. And we put this video together because Cindy's story is one of many stories that we're trying to share and explain that um, we, have to, we have to do a better job of listening to the needs of those who had military service and now returning. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, make sure I'm sharing the right screen. So hold on a second. I'm just gonna pause for a second, make sure y'all could hear that, right? Was that a thumbs up? When I played that music, you could hear that okay? We can hear it, Natalie, but we don't see the video. You have to stop share and then reshare again. Oh, okay, okay. It looks yeah. like I didn't. Hold on a second. Do you see the video now? I see your the AgriSafe logo. Okay. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let's see. It should work. Thank you. I have been in the service for almost 17 and a half years. The first four years active duty um, stationed out of Hawaii. And then I took a break in service, to, um, then decided I missed it. So I joined the reserves and I've been in the reserves ever since. So, so you, you grew up um, as a farm girl? Yes, in, I, in, yep. In a small town. Mm -hmm. We have a machine repair shop, which is a part of the ag business, um, which is kind of diversified and in mid 80s we started building grain bins and buildings and that part's really taken off when it came down to it i 
was commissioned as an engineer officer and I was going to spend four years in Hawaii. So I went as a vertical construction platoon leader. Initially, we did a lot of base renovations because there was nothing. I mean, we're coming in to a country where there's nothing. So we lived mostly with mortars and rockets. Like we got bombed mm. so much, like so much. It was just terrible. For that deployment, probably the hardest thing for me coming back to was transitioning into a reality where the sky wasn't gonna kill me. I remember being like overwhelmed by the sky, like this blue sky. I was like, oh my God, you know, it was just the weirdest feeling. Well, I redeployed and I separated from the army. So I moved back from Hawaii um, and I came back and I worked in the family business. Every time I get deployed, I come home. I ended up like staying at the farm for a couple months and then I go off and do my own thing. It's just nice to be back around family. I mean, it's a way to catch up. And after you've been gone with limited communication for so long, it's nice to just have that. What drives me? Because it is something I do passionately like to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then there's also what I've seen of others not having and what we can do for them and it's helping others. It's always fun to come home. You get excited, um, cause, well, it's a double-edged sword actually. Um, it's exciting because you're not gonna be overseas for a little while, mm -hmm. you get two weeks, um, and you get to catch up with your family and just decompress for a little while and just not have to do anything um, but at the same time, it's also a reminder that their lives have continued and yours has been kind of on pause for a little while, even though you're doing something every single day, when you're deployed, your life is essentially on pause. Growing up here, you have that whole mentality of, you know, graduate here, date here, married by this, kids by this, X, Y, Z. But I've completely busted that ceiling. <laughs> but that yardstick never left. And some of them are silly. It's like a Mary Poppins measure stick. They make no sense. There's really no reality to how you should feel or why you're measuring yourself that way. Mm -hmm. um, so you just have to figure out what your next step is going to be for you and what's going to be the best move for you. Sometimes you have to let go of the picture of what you thought life would be like and learn to find joy in the story you're actually living. Thank you for um, viewing that with me and I'm going to go back to to sharing my PowerPoint slide. Um, that was something that we we put together um, with with some resources of doing that interview and then thinking about um, Cindy's story. And we have well over an hour of interview tape with her, but um, we wanted to to do a better job of understanding uh, the struggles that folks face when they come back home, but what farming brings to them in terms of opportunity and um, we did this uh, video after we did a think tank back in um, 2018, and the think tank was to focus on veteran farmers. And certainly, AgriSafe, we have so much to learn. But we know that um, that there's other aspects of total farmer health that uh, affect the veteran farmer. And I have some of these icons here that you see, like I've talked about social support, the impact on finances, healthcare access, uh, sleep issues. Um, and we understand that there's a lot of stress that, that farmers are facing and, and also uh, that veterans may be experiencing as well. So if you're a veteran farmer, again, you may have a compounded um, uh, health issues, mental health issues not being addressed. And post-traumatic stress disorder is certainly one of those, one of those uh, health conditions. And 
Uh, most of you know it can occur and people have experienced or witnessed a traumatic event. Uh, and those in, that have been in military service have experienced a high rate of this disorder. Um, approximately 3.5% of US adults and estimated one in 11 people will be diagnosed with PTSD in their lifetime. And women are twice as likely as men to have that. So specifically looking at mental health care access, and you know, I'm gonna spend kind of the rest of the time just exploring this with you. Um, it is a high priority for us here at AgriSafe. Uh, we, we are not, we don't provide mental health services, but what we do is we work hard to uh, really look at who in rural America is serving the needs of farmers, okay, their mental health needs. And we believe that a primary care professional needs to do more to integrate mental health into their care. So we've got a lots of programming and training to help uh, that primary care provider ask those difficult questions um, to try to, to start those conversations. But we also know if you're a veteran and you're a farmer, you may have also pre-existing conditions that, that really necessitate a need to understand the whole person. So when we look at access points and ways to improve mental health services, we're gonna look at three things. We're gonna look at accessibility of mental health care, availability and acceptability. Now accessibility has to do with rural residents having to travel long distances to receive care. Availability, uh, again, has to do with whether or not uh, when, they, when they do travel, is there availability of care? Um, they have less folks to, to access, so you, don't, you may have to have your availability run through a primary care provider. Um, you're not gonna have a mental health care net network. Um, and then acceptability. Um, certainly acceptability of accessing care is a problem. If, you're, if you've got a social services um, folks that provide care, mental health care, and they've got the only place in town and you're walking in, there's stigma associated with that. Um, so we know that, it, that it's not easy in rural America because of the shortage and also the acceptability of, of receiving care. And there's been a lot of great work being done to reduce stigma related to mental health care. I think um, the younger generation is recognizing that, that it's important to take care of the body and the mind, but we still have a long way to go. Um, I'm really, really encouraged when I see programming related to tele-mental health delivery in rural areas uh, for those that don't have mental health care. We are not gonna solve the mental health care shortage anytime soon. And I'll show you a, a map that shows you how bad that is. Um, so we have to be creative in thinking about accessing care. What's happened with the COVID pandemic is that you've seen an increase in utilization of telemedicine across the board, not just for uh, teletherapy, but even telehealth. Um, but, but teletherapy was in place obviously before, before telemedicine. And what, what I wanna see happen is I wanna see a, a more pilot programs reaching out to rural communities reaching out to veteran farmers, to farmers in dis distant locations, and we just don't have it. We do not have models of care that are specifically targeted to the farmer, but we do have cares uh, models that are sh that are targeted to uh, rural residents and vets. So I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about on that. So just give me a minute. Take me a second to get this up. Well, agriculture is known as what? one of the most dangerous industries. That. In an effort to help. Oh, Natalie, you need to reshare your screen. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm trying to get to the right one. This is a problem of having too many, too many things up here. Okay. Hopefully I didn't disappear on me. I really wanted to show this to y'all. So, okay, here we go. We're getting closer here. Now this is what I'm going to show y'all here in a minute. This is from um, 2019, but this is one example of accessing care through tele telemedicine. Um, and let's see. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me get that. Whoops. Sorry, my technology. I'm not able to do this as quickly as I wanted to share this with y'all. Okay, so I'm sharing that screen. 
West of the continent. Let me go ahead and enlarge this. Okay, hopefully this will work. Divide and nine miles south of the Canadian border is a town worth celebrating. Ready? Set. Big Sky Country brought even bigger scissors for the occasion. Whoa. VFW Post 6786 in Eureka, Montana, a town of just 1,100, became the first site in the country to have access to VA virtual health care through Atlas. Accessing telehealth through local area stations is VA's solution to providing timely care to veterans who live long distances from VA medical centers. Stepping foot inside the Atlas pod instantly connects veterans to their health care teams and in this case eliminates a four-hour drive to the closest VA medical center for nearly 300 veterans in the Eureka community. It's an incredible feeling. Dr. Leonie Hayworth is VA's national synchronous lead for telehealth services. And I think what Phillips did very well is they listened to what we said it would take to bring best in class care to veterans. And Phillips brought their expertise in design to create a comfortable and therapeutic environment for veterans to receive their health care services. Um, so with their creativity, with their experience in an ambient environment, and with the experience that other partners like Steelcase have in building a robust pod, um, and what we know veterans need as far as their health care, um, it really was collaborative experience to build something wonderful. Eliminating barriers to accessing health care for veterans has been one of the top priorities for VA in recent years. VA's Anywhere to Anywhere initiative was announced in May 2018 and enabled VA to care for veterans regardless of their location. Atlas is an extension of that campaign. We would like to offer the best in class VA care. So I'm not going to um, I'm not going to play the rest of it, but I just wanted the reason why I wanted to bring this to your attention is because um, there is there are dollars to do this type of work even outside of what the VA has available to them, and the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy um, is actually housed in that federal office. Is a uh, I'll make sure you guys can see which one I'm sharing here. Um, I want to share the right screen, so I'm showing you the right thing. But um, here we go. Sorry. So the the office rural policy is based um, uh, has a rural veterans uh, office, and they have a lot of great initiatives. But they also have funding for telemedicine, and it's really important if you're uh, working at the state level and um, you want to to better serve those that are that are hard to reach. Really think about this. Now, a lot of folks will say, well, you know, farmers don't, farmers want to talk to a human being. They don't want to get their care remotely. I don't buy that. I think we have to, we have to figure out whether that's true. And, and when you saw uh, an increase in use of telemedicine with the COVID, the pandemic, I think that a farmer would um, be open to getting access to a, a mental health professional uh, that they're able to access and that understands agriculture be more apt to do that, uh, even if they have to do it through a video screen. The te technology today is so advanced that um, that that booth that you saw in that video, that was because of um, internet uh, issues in terms of access, because some of these places are so remote. But if you have the ability to have uh, FaceTime like a screen on your phone, this is advanced to a point where people are able to get care directly through their phone, um, through their smartphone. So please don't discount the availability of, of this technology and what it can mean for care. Um, and that telehealth uh, funding, by the way, um, if you look at grants.gov, you're gonna find um, the sequence of timing for that. But it, some of the funding also comes from USDA. So USDA has grant programs for telemedicine as does um, the Federal Office of Health Policy, which is run under HRSA. So right now I'm showing you um, uh, some other solutions I want you to think about. Obviously, this is through the National Agribility Program that we're doing the, this programming here um, or this webinar. Um, I can't say enough about the partners involved, and uh, certainly they're looking at creative ways to serve uh, those with disabilities. So certainly think about um, your partnerships there. Farmer Veterans Coalition need to just briefly mention um, how valuable that organization is to AgriSafe. Um, 
AgriSafe isn't going to earn the trust of farmer veterans unless we work closely with organizations such as the Farmer Veteran Coalition, which has um, also state-based chapters. One of the things that we'll be rolling out this fall is um, we're going to make sure uh, that every uh, farmer that's a member of the Veteran Coalition is also gets free membership to AgriSafe and all of our, our learning platforms that we have available. It's important that we do that because we don't want to make it difficult here at AgriSafe uh, for farmers to be able to access our content. So we're really excited about that. So you'll find out, you'll find more information um, about that when we roll that out. But again, any any farmer that um, is, a, is a member of the Farmer Veteran Coalition um, this fall, uh, probably around October, we're going to launch a campaign they can get access to all of our um, training and content on our website. Um, one of the things I also want to, I need to make sure I mention because it's absolutely imperative is if you're not already uh, familiar with the, the veteran crisis line, please um, make sure to make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, here we go. I'm going to share this one. Um, please make sure that that you you understand this line and, and really embrace it. So the National Suicide Prevention Hotline um, it is, is established, but what they recognized back in 2007, a need to have a specific line for veterans. Um, and so what's gonna happen is, is that uh, this line, if it's utilized, that, the, that a veteran will be able to access the line dedicated to them. Now it runs very similar to the National Lifeline. It's all coordinated, but um, certainly we know that uh, we need to, to make sure that the veterans know about this. Here at AgriSafe, um, we're gonna be launching uh, a national hotline for farmers and it is a crisis line and it will be launched in January. Um, that crisis line for farmers uh, will be staffed 24 seven by uh, mental health professionals, and it will be with the with the goal of getting them access into care. So um, you've got the veterans specific line, and then you'll have a farm line, a national crisis line uh, for farmers that's going to roll out in January. Please feel free to reach out to us if we can provide more information on that. Um, I want to also before I before I uh, finish up here, just just let you know um, we did launch a brand new website here at AgriSafe. And um, we did it in mind to help organize information. And we have dedicated content just for farmers uh, that are veterans. And um, you're gonna see here uh, really different options for folks. But again, uh, this was launched on Friday, last actually about a week ago. And we have in here what we call a health hub. So. We know it's a lot of information for folks to navigate. Some people are just looking for, they just wanna know, hey, where can I find the right mask, um, a, a respirator when I'm, when I'm harvesting grain? Uh, what about when I'm applying pesticides? And we know it's a lot to keep up with. And so we purposely designed the farmer and rancher section so that you could type in a health category and get a clearinghouse of content both um, content that we house, but also um, our colleagues across the nation. And the idea is to link people up to, to training too for self-care. So uh, please check it out. If there's anything that we can do to, um, to you know, improve the options for veterans, that's certainly a priority for us. I'm gonna just jump to our learning lab so that you can get, a, get an idea what that looks like. Um, you're gonna see about uh, about a half a dozen or so uh, web-based trainings on demand for veterans. They're all free to access, um, and they are about veteran farmer health. One of them was done by Shea Folk about um, when to put the work away. And we're going to continue to develop more, um, oops, I'm trying to write this in here so I can show you more content for veterans. Um, kind of give you an example. Let's see here. See if I'm show, sharing the right screen, screen. I want to make sure. Tell my switch. Um, so this is an example of you know some folks that we have presenting. Uh, we really try hard to bring in folks that have um, 
background in military service, we feel like they're going to have more credibility speaking to veteran farmers than, than those that haven't served. Uh, so please take a look at Learning Lab. You'll find uh, all this contact for veterans um, free to access. And certainly, if you, if you can provide valuable health information and training for veterans, we would love to hear from you because we certainly can do more um, to address your unique needs. And coming this, um, coming this November, we're going to have what we call a health risk assessment that is um, just for for veteran farmers. So right now, I'll just kind of pull this up real quick. I just started this brand new uh, HRA. So let me make sure I'm still sharing correctly. All righty. So here's our health risk assessment. Um, we have a health risk assessment that, that you can take um, on your own time but there's one health risk assessment that's for uh, general and there's one for women and we're gonna have one for veteran farmers that's gonna um, get launched sometime in mid-October. And the one for veteran farmers is, um, has been developed with a lot of research uh, looking at what are the unique needs of veteran farmers. So making sure that we have a, a self-health tool that veteran farmers can take and what will happen is when they enter their um, exposures, they'll enter their military exposures as well as their farming exposures, then it's gonna be able to um, provide recommendations that they can use for self-care or they could um, take those recommendations and share them with their health professional and say, you know, uh, I did this health risk assessment that AgriSafe has for veteran farmers. And I understand that I had some exposure, respiratory exposure in the military and I have respiratory exposure in farming. Um, you know, is there, do we need to look at, you know, some of the problems I'm having with my respiratory health a little bit differently? So the whole point of the health risk assessment for veteran farmers is to really help them navigate um, their, their occupational history, but then to share that information with a trusted health professional. So we're really excited about that. We've been researching and developing that for well over a year and can absolutely use your help in, in rolling it out. Um, I'm done with my presentations. I wanna to get to the last slide. We certainly couldn't do this work without uh, the help of funders. And so what the, our partner in this uh, whole initiative is the Central States for Agricultural Safety and Health, which is uh, based out of Nebraska. And they have uh, really funded our work in the veterans health space and really look forward to future development. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Natalie for this presentation, for all that uh, valuable information. And if um, anyone has questions, I think at this point, um, you can open your microphone and ask the question or just put it in the chat box. Yeah, I don't see any questions in the chat box. Great. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. And um, like I said, we are we're a small, mighty outfit here at AgriSafe, and would love to um, work with anybody in the future. Thank you very much for that presentation, and Natalie. And thanks again to everybody for joining us today. And please follow the link in the chat box to answer the evaluation questions about today's session. Did and you see our questions? I don't see any questions here. Hold on a minute. Uh, there's one says, will this be available for review? Can we get a copy of the PowerPoint? Um, great information and resources, thank you number of other comments. I, I, I'm happy to, um, this is Natalie again, I'm happy to uh, send that slide deck to uh, folks. Um, I just put my email in the chat. It's nroy at agrisafe.org. Uh, so happy to share that. And then if you have any difficulty navigating um, our learning management platform and the different trainings, 
please reach out to, oops, I don't think I hit send on that. Please reach out to me because um, like I said, we just launched the new website about a week ago. So we wanna make sure that it's not hard to find the information you need. Okay. Uh, the recording and um, a copy of the PowerPoint will also be archived on the National Agribility Project website. Um, and I'm also going to share the link for the AgriSafe website. Um, yeah. Yeah, there was a question yeah. about um, yeah. well, how many veterans are in the U.S., how many farmer veterans, and actually the Veterans Farmer Coalition would have better numbers than we have access to, because we're just looking at 2017 census. Um, that has about 370,000 uh, farmers are veterans, uh, but we don't know, we don't, I don't know of that, what percentage of our hobby versus full-time, that's a great question, but I think the Veterans Farmers Coalition probably has better numbers on that. Okay, and I don't see any more questions, and I invite you to take a check on that um, AgriSafe Network website and invite you to join us for the next session, Programming for Veterans in Agriculture, How Maine Does It. It's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you have any questions, you can contact Tess McKeel at uh, TM. C K E E L at goodwillfingerlakes.org. Thank you very much. And please don't forget to click on the link for the evaluation. Thank you, everybody. I'll stay on in case people still need to access the link or uh, Natalie's email or the website. Um, but other yeah. than that, we're all set. Thank you. Uh, Natalie's email again. It's in the chat box. If you click on the chat box. Okay. Um, it is, at, let me, I'll read it. Rats. N, N, Roy, N, R, O, Y, at A, G, R, I, S, A, F, E, which is agrisafe.org. All right. Uh, could you read that through one more time, please? Sure. N R O Y at A G R I S A F e.org. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. See you next time. All right. Thank you, everybody.